answers to assignment questions. Question 90. The two precautions of the above experiment. 1. Keep stirring during heating to make sure the temperature is uniform. 2. Measure the maximum temperature and take it as the final temperature of water when the heater is turned on. Question 91. The experimental value of specific capacity is larger than the standard value of 4,200 joule per kilogram per degree Celsius. Give a possible explanation. There is heat loss to the surroundings, so you have to give more energy than it is required to the water, and part of the energy is lost to the surroundings. Question 92. Give a suggestions then. Alright, we may start the experiment from a temperature lower than the room temperature. You may mix ice with water before the experiment. So there is heat gain in the first part of the experiment. And then there will be heat loss in the second part. So the net heat gain or loss will be reduced. And so the result will be more accurate. Question 93. Calculate the energy absorbed by that 0.4 kg of water when its temperature increases by 3 degrees Celsius. You may apply the equation Q equals mc delta t. Substitute all the values, you may find the answer. Question 94. From the temperature graph, can you tell which liquid has the highest Specific heat capacity. Since the mass of liquids are the same, so the one with the highest specific heat capacity means it has to absorb the largest amount of energy in order to increase the temperature by a single degree Celsius. So it takes more time for the temperature to increase. So the answer is C. Question. 95. Using the graph given in question 94, can you calculate the specific heat capacity of the substances A, B, and C? The energy Q is given by power multiplied with the time of heating, and the time of heating can be found from the graph. The temperature rise can also be found from the graph. And for the answers, which are specific heat capacity, the unit should be joule per degree Celsius per kilogram. Question 97. Calculate the time required for heating 10 kilograms of water to increase its temperature by 15 degrees Celsius using an electric heater. First of all, you have to find how much energy is needed by using the formula mc delta t again. Then, use the formula q equals pt to find the time taken in order for the electric heater to produce that amount of energy. Question 98. A kettle heats up 0.45 kg of water to increase its temperature by 70 degrees Celsius in 2 minutes. Find the power of the kettle. Similar to the last question, you have to find the amount of energy absorbed by the water first, and then using the equation Q equals Pt, where T is the time in seconds, so that you may find the power of the kettle. Question 99. This time you have a kilogram of hot water and its temperature decreases by 5 degrees Celsius. So there is heat loss to the surroundings and you have to find the power of heat loss of the hot water. Similar to the last two questions, you have to find the energy that is released by the water, energy that is given out, divided by the time taken which is half a minute which is 30 seconds, then you may find the power of heat loss. Question 100. 
In this question, there is not only the hot water, but there is also the beaker. The hot beaker also becomes cold, and so the beaker also gives out energy. The hot water gives out energy given by the formula m c delta t. The beaker also gives out energy given by the formula capital letter c multiplied with delta t, the change in temperature. So the total energy given out would be q1 plus q2. That gives the correct answer for that question. Section 3.3 .3, Specific Heat Capacity of a Metal Cylinder. Again, we will use an immersion heater to determine the specific capacity of a good conductor of heat, such as a metal block. The setup is similar to the last experiment, but this time we have a metal block. We put a few drops of oil into the holes. For the thermometer and heater to improve thermal conduction between them, which means the heater can transfer heat to the metal block more effectively. You have to measure the initial joule meter reading, initial temperature, and after heating, measure the final joule meter reading and final temperature, which is the maximum temperature after the heater is turned off. Then you may calculate the specific capacity of the metal. As a gentle reminder, you may always refer to the back cover of your book for a list of equations you may find useful.